Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Saturday, October 25th, 7.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. Two spacecraft, count them two, will pass right through Comet 3I Atlas's tail. And, well, maybe we'll get some interesting information about the not a spaceship. Buckle up. We also have the strongest hurricane to hit Jamaica maybe ever. Melissa, we got a lot to discuss. Keep calm. It's boom time. It's true. Hurricane Melissa could be Jamaica's most powerful storm in history. There is nowhere that will escape the wrath of this storm, said Evan Thompson, the principal director of Jama Jamaica's meteorological service. Holy macaroni. Here we can see people abandoning a, a car on an impassable street flooded by tropical storm Melissa in Santo Domingo. This is before it's even happening. Yeah. So this is going to be historic. Jamaican officials issued dire warning Saturday as Hurricane Melissa bar barrels towards the island, po poised to become the strongest storm ever recorded there. U.S. forecasters said Melissa is rapidly intensifying Saturday and is likely to achieve Cat 5 status within 48 hours. The most potent of five hurricane force categories with sustained winds of at least 157 miles per hour. The National Hurricane Center forecaster said Saturday at 5 p.m., at the discussion center, uh, computer models are in increasing agreement that Melissa will make direct landfall in Jamaica, likely early Tuesday. Do not take this lightly, ladies and gentlemen, especially if you're listening from Jamaica. All airports in Jamaica will close 8 p.m. Saturday. The last flight of the day will be allowed to land if delayed, but all flights after that will be suspended until further notice, and that may be indefinitely. Here is the current path of Hurricane Melissa. Currently sustained winds at over 100 miles per hour. And at 100 miles per hour, that puts it comfortably right in the Cat 2 category, rapidly intensifying. Over the next two days, it will be a major hurricane, even as it makes landfall early morning Tuesday. By Tuesday evening, even if it, after it traverses all of Jamaica, it is forecast to be a major hurricane. It may increase in strength before it hits Eastern Cuba. This is going to be devastating, folks. It's already flooding Haiti, and, well, Jamaica is next on the list. Here is the key message for Hurricane Melissa. And here is the key message for Hurricane Melissa. This advisory has a 5 p.m. tonight. For Jamaica, a multi-day period of damaging winds and heavy rainfall is expected to begin tonight causing catastrophic and life-threatening flash flooding, numerous landslides as well. Extensive infrastructure damage, long-duration power and communication outages, and potentially prolonged isolation of communities is highly likely. A life-threatening storm surge is also likely along portions of the southern coast early next week. All preparation should be completed by today. In Haiti, Catastrophic and life-threatening flash flooding and landslides are expected across southwestern Haiti into early next week, likely causing extensive infrastructural damage and potentially prolonged isolation of communities. Strong winds could also potentially last for a day or more over the Tiboran Peninsula near in Haiti. The Dominican Republic heavy rainfall could produce catastrophic flash flooding and numerous landslides in southern portions of the country. Say that five times fast. Eastern Cuba, they've got a little time. S and Southeast Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos monitor Melissa closely. There is an increasing risk of significant storm surge, damaging winds, and heavy rainfall by the middle of next week. In Eastern Cuba, the risk of life-threatening flash flooding and landslides is increasing, and a hurricane watch is now in effect for portions of Eastern Cuba. Now, the most devastating part is the immense amount of rain, and we just added a purple region. The dark purple is 30-plus inches, and that is the end of the scale. And so we could be seeing record-breaking rain totals, three feet or more of rain in just the next four days. 
That is going to be devastating. Also, portions of the Dominican Republic receiving 16 to 20 inches. And like I said, isolated 30 inches um, here in Haiti. Bad news. Just really bad. It's going to be epic. Uh, some of the stories coming out over the next week with this hurricane. Amazingly enough, it's the first named Caribbean storm. It was a record breaker in the Caribbean until Melissa formed, and now it is another type of record breaker, unfortunately. New Jersey weather, a nor'easter threat is increasing for next week. We'll have the full forecast in just a moment here. As winter arrives early for a Florida duo who became stuck on snowbound Engineers Pass last the other night, two feet of snow, trapped a father and son in a Jeep uh, Thursday night. And there you go. They had to be rescued. Very expensive Jeep ride for these two from Florida. And because of that heavy snow, Keystone announces imminent Saturday opening, joining A Basin in Colorado for the battle to be the first resort open for the 2025-26 ski season. Often it's us, but there has just been very little snow here, just a few inches up at Wolf Creek so far. A quick look at Tornado HQ Live shows the only severe weather warning is off the coast of Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, and that is a special marine warning. But there is rain in East Texas coming down, as well as the center of the U.S. and the Pacific Northwest, as well as snow, ho, 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 and that means power outages. Power outages in Texas with over 35,000 without power. Washington just hit 67,000. Wonder what's going on there. It was just at 30,000 moments ago. 183,000 across the U.S. without power, including 33,000 in Oregon. Check out poweroutage.us. And now the full forecast. Severe thunderstorms and flash flooding threat in the southern U.S. with atmospheric river in the Pacific Northwest. There you can see those winter storm watches, the warnings, flood warnings here, and freeze warnings over there. Severe thunderstorms in areas of heavy to excessive rainfall are forecast over portions of the southern plains into the lower Mississippi Valley through the weekend. An atmospheric river followed by a Pacific storm will bring periods of gusty winds with low elevation heavy rain and high elevation snow to parts of the northwestern U.S. through the entire weekend. And there we can see what's happening in the Pacific Northwest causing those power outages and power outages happening in Texas as well. Three, six, nine hours from now, Storms are going to explode in the south. Take a look at that. Alabama, Mississippi, you are not out of the woods. And snow, ho, ho, ho. This is going to be Monday, Tuesday, and then your Wednesday. Here's that nor'easter late next week developing and moving up there as another system in the Pacific Northwest moves in November 1st. It's going to be epic. There's going to be a lot of snow in the Pacific Northwest and the Northeast this year, in my opinion. And here is just through the 10th of November. A November to remember, perhaps. And even by Halloween, we could see a Halloween storm here in the Appala Appalachians burying some communities. Shut up, Al! Get in your hole! Al Gore says I'm making this all up. No bunt cake for Al. Seismic update, interesting rumbler up in the middle of nowhere in the Be Be Beaufort Sea. Is that the gyre trying to tell us something? Well, I do digress. The most recent big rumbler was a six magnitude in the Solomon Islands that just kicked off about an hour ago, and the western U.S. is trembling. But the big story is worldwide volcano news. We've got a huge list today and some spectacular explosions. Sangay to 19,000 feet. Kreshininikov, 9,000-foot blast there as well. Reventador to 13,000 feet. Semeru to 14,000 feet. Santa Guito, 15,000. Ibu to 8,000. Fuego to 16,000. Akan to 5,000. Bet you never heard of that one. Semeru, who knew, now you do 14,000-foot blast. Reventador, 14,000-foot blast as well. Tal Volcano to 5,000. Nevado de Ruiz, volcanic ash reported there is the spectacular eruption at Can Leon. Absolutely fantastic. With the stars in the sky, and the lights of this bustling city. Sun gay to 22,000 feet. A Frio magmatic explosion today at Tal. Look at that. 
Oh, we've got Planchon Petaroa puffing to 16,000 feet. It actually says that. <laughs> Ibu to 8,000, Fuego to 17,000, Santa Guido to 15,000, Holy Macaroli, Krasianinikov, 9,000 foot blast there. Raventador to 15,000, Semadu to 14,000, Ibu to 8,000. And we've got Sangay wrapping up the list. And that brings us to space weather on Thursday. The stereo ahead spacecraft, which is now roughly 45 degrees off the sun Earth line and seeing a partial portion of the sun beyond the west limb, captured a faint CME that may be Earth directed. And it is now showing up on the WSA and little spiral. You can see it leaving there on the 24th and arriving here on the 27th. Very low level activity, maybe G1 geomagnetic storming. But that's about it, all quiet on the sun. They're only giving it KP4 on the forecast. So there you go. Two spacecraft will pass right through Comet 3I Atlas's tail, and it's fantastic. All sorts of crazy things have been suggested regarding 3I Atlas, including, well, you know, it's not a spaceship. Just the third known interstellar object that we've discovered. A new paper pre-published on ARXIV and accepted for publication by the Research Notes of American Astronomical Society uh, well, is discussing the fact that two spacecraft are Hera and Europa Clipper. And utilizing these two spacecraft already in, remote, in route to their separate destinations to potentially detect ions from the object's spectacular tail. They are not going to show us any pictures of the spacecraft, folks. Just detect ions. That's it. And we'll break it all down in just a few minutes over at Rumble. Uh, magnetic reversal news on Rumble where uh, science without consensus happens every Saturday, 8 p.m. Mountain Time. That's the science show that Leah and I host. Tonight's title, Catastrophism in Cosmology. We go over so many uh, articles that have been out over the past week, including the latest updates of 3i Atlas, a medieval, a medieval tsunami that has been redated, rings of Chiron, which you're looking at right here. That is uh, an object... It's like a fusion between an asteroid and a comet. We break it all down in terms of electric universe theory. And, well, we will bring you up to speed. So join us in a few minutes. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Join us over at Magnetic Reversal News on Rumble, 8 p.m. Mountain Time. And most importantly, be safe. The best thing you can do to support us is to hit the subscribe button right now. We love each and every one of you. Be safe. And that is a boom. Double header.